Mr. Hahn here. I'm here, Mr. Hahn here. I'm here to chat with you a little bit about proportions. This should be quick, easy, and fun, but we'll see. Let me share my screen. Here we go. Buckle your seat belts and get ready for the ride of your life. Uh, so grab a blank piece of paper. If you'd write on top the word proportions, that would be fantastic. Um, and really, when it boils down to it, when it boils down to it, remember, proportions are nothing more than equal, excuse me, equal ratios and also simply just equal fractions. Equal fractions. Okay. And back in the day, we did some pretty simple ones, you know, something like this. You know, let's say there was one boy for every two girls in class. You know, if there were 30 kids in class, you know, 30 girls in class, how many would be boys back in the day? And this is the way you can do this if it works out. You know, the, the, the quick, easy way is just to go, you know, two times what is 30. 2 times 15 is 30, so you multiply the top by 15. But unfortunately, sometimes you have to put your big boy pants on, and these are not going to work out that easy. And we have to figure out how to solve them when we they're just not that simple. For example, uh, if you come up with a proportion that looks like this, x over 15, equals 2 over 3, which, well, okay, you can do this one. 3 times 5, 2 times 5 is 10. Let's say it did not work out. I'm going to redo the same one we just did. You know, x over 15 equals 2 over 3. If it didn't work out, and I'll give you one that doesn't, but let's do one that does right now. We do what we call in math using cross products. Not sure what's going on with my pen here. Cross products. And simply all that means is this. If you have two equal fractions, Take the one I just did up here. You know, what happens with equal fractions is if you multiply the diagonals together, 2 times 15 is 30, and 1 times 30 is also 30, which means I can solve this one by the same thing. I can multiply this diagonal together. I don't know what x is, but I just write it as 3x. And that has to equal what this diagonal is, which is 30, or 2 times 15. And then if you solve it, boom, you get x equals 10. Back in my day, they used to call it the means equals the extremes or something like that. I don't think we do that anymore. But if you hear that, that's what's going on. So here, let me give you one really that doesn't work out. This one comes out of the book here, um, and it looks like this. Check this one out, x minus 1 over 12 equals 1 over 6. And obviously, um, you could take 6 times 2, but then 1 times 2, you'd have to multiply this by 2. It really doesn't seem like it makes sense. So this is going to be one of those ones where you want to use our little cross products thing over here. So let's do this. I always like to put the x on the left side. So here's what you have to be careful with on this one. Okay, this is 6 times this whole thing. You really need to put that in parentheses. It is 6 times x minus 1. And that equals 12 times 1. So we get into a little bit more of a complex equation here, but let's do that out. I want to do the distributive property. 6 times x is 6x. 6 times a negative 1 is negative 6. 
and that equals 12 times 1, which is 12. Now, solving this whole thing, which you guys are almost experts at solving these complex equations now, simply means I get rid of the subtracting 6 by add 6, add 6 over here. If 6x equals 18, I divide by 6, I divide by 6, and x equals 3. That's what I get when I solve that one. Let me look and see if there is something a little bit more challenging or complicated than that. Now we'll just do one more. Nothing, nothing terribly difficult. <clears throat> we'll go over here. Let's do 5 over n plus 2 equals 10 over 16. 10 over 16. Again, if I do some cross products here, I am going to take 10 times the quantity n plus 2. I guess we'll do that down here. 10 times the quantity of n plus 2. And that is going to equal whatever 5 times 16 is. Doing a little distributive property here as we solve this, I get 10 n plus, to multiply the 10 times to 2, we get 20, and 5 times 16 is 80. Solving the equations, subtract 20, subtract 20. If 10 n equals 60, I, mean, I do have a little more room down here. I divide by my 10, divide by my 10, so n is going to equal 6. Hopefully that helped you out a little bit here. You will run across that quite a bit in your mathematical career, so you really need to kind of get some sort of a handle on that. And that will be it for this recording. Thanks for your attention, and we will talk to you later.